So Tom, we're down here in Red River Gorge. Tell me what we're doing today. We're getting ready to stock some brook trout here in Parched Corn Creek today. And this is an ongoing study, right? Yeah, this is the last year of a five-year project that we started. And from here, we're gonna see how the fish do. This whole idea of putting brook trout in Parched Corn Creek came from a gentleman from Louisville back in the 50s, right? Right, so crazy story. This gentleman lived in Louisville, had ties to Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and wanted to reintroduce this fish to his area. So he did tons and tons and tons of research about different streams around the area, mm -hmm. found some that were actually suitable habitat for brook trout, which are very finicky in their habitat, trucked them down from Pennsylvania, and then reintroduced them in these remote streams in eastern Kentucky. This guy was not a fisheries biologist. Right, should have been. <laughs> he missed his calling. Yeah, absolutely. Bill Holmes, I think, was his mm -hmm. name. And Bill would pick these trout up and created an aerator and a way to keep the water cool in a backseat of a car and brought them down here and released them. Right. And did it for years. Yes. It's not a really easy thing to do. Is it? Well, raising fish in general isn't an easy thing to do. That's step one. Then he did step two, found a suitable place to stock them, which is something that we spend our whole working career trying to figure out. And I was reading that he had actually traveled all through the Appalachian Mountains and had found two waterways in the state of Kentucky that he thought would be suitable for brook trout. Right. One here, and the other one, I think if it was in Bell or Letcher County or something. Mm -hmm. so yep. Imagine in the 50s, before the highway systems, before GPS, and navigating this terrain and taking data, water temperature, water clarity, and to try to find two suitable streams. Yep. Fast forward now, 2013, we start as an agency putting these back in. It's an amazing story. It is an amazing story, absolutely. So we're bagging up these fish, basically putting in about 15 to 18 brook trout, and then putting in oxygen, and then banding them so the water doesn't come out, and then loading them in backpacks to be carried down to the stream. Hey guys, we've arrived. We're gonna head downstream dumping bags in each individual hole. The riffles will be only a few inches deep. We're not too far from the head of the stream itself. You were telling me that predominantly these trout species are gonna live on insects. What type of insects can be found in this area that are good forage for trout? Well, pretty much anything that falls off the canopy itself will drop in. There's probably some hatches of mayflies and stoneflies. Okay. And that'll give them some kind of food source. Brook trout will eventually get big enough to eat other fish species, but they don't prefer it, right? Right, yep. Yeah, they're primary insectivores. They will switch over if there's a wounded fish, something like that in front of them, then they'll eat that for sure, but primarily insectivores. Okay, cool. So this is one of the sites that we'll probably stock. What makes this kind of a good site is the deeper pool, the woody habitat that's here at the end of it, and also the heavy riffle coming in to add oxygen to the water that's already there. So we can go ahead and dump a bag here. If somebody wants to dump their bag here, you got two in there? Yeah, if you want to dump one bag in here. So because we're close to the head, this water is coming out of the ground, the range of temperatures is probably fairly minimal. This is never going to freeze solid, right? No. The water coming out of the ground is 50-something degrees. So typically, the highest it gets in the entire summer is high 60s, right? Yes. You yep. hope. Yes, hopefully so. Because if it so. gets over that, then... Then these fish aren't able to make it. The Department of Fish and Wildlife stocks trout all over the state, but it really is a situation where we're putting trout into fins lakes or areas where we know that the trout are not going to live throughout the summertime. Yes. We put them in and allow people to catch them. They harvest them and they take them. And this situation is a little different. This is a situation where we do hope that there are some reproduction and there is no take. If you catch one of these brook trout, it has to immediately be released. Yes, absolutely. So we want them released as gentle as possible so that they are able to live further and reproduce in the years to come. Look at that, beautiful little fish. They're ready to go.
of them will stay in the bag. <laughs> It's a very unique situation. Where else can you go in the state of Kentucky and catch brook trout? Cumberland Tailwaters, I guess, has brook trout, but nothing like this where you're walking into a stream half a mile to three quarters of a mile in with this beautiful scenery and fishing for brook trout that we're going to coin as wild if they reproduce by themselves. Yeah, absolutely. That's the only other place I've ever been in the state of Kentucky where I've caught brook trout, and that's the Cumberland River. And we're looking at a creek here. I think I could jump across most of it. Definitely, yep. Yeah. This would pose a much bigger challenge to catch a fish, I would think. As clear as this water is, fish are going to see you. They are. Most people will sneak up from them from downstream and try and cast at them as far away as they can in order to not spook them out of the holes that they're already in. It's about the opportunity to catch one, not about catching the biggest trout of all time. Because you're not going to come here and do that, right? No. So what's a really good one here? Nine inches, eight inches? Really, yeah, absolutely. I mean, really that's a one. really, really good fish. Yes, yeah, so we're stocking them in at about five inches. Their life expectancy in here is probably about three to five years. So hopefully in that time, they'll make it to eight or nine inches and be able to be harvested then. It's about passion. It really is driven by people that want to get out and experience something very unique. It is, yep. Fantastic. Well, let's get these fish in here. Well, that's it. Those things are fast. They head for cover, huh? They do. They go to this deep water woody debris and just hang out in there. You bump the debris and they'll come out for just a second and dart to the next spot. Well, that was our last bag of the day, and this is the last stocking. You just put the last few trout in parched corn creek. We did, yeah. Hopefully the spawning will take off and they'll be able to keep themselves sustained is the hope in the long run. This turned out to be a pretty good story. The department decided to do a five-year plan, but taking a non-native species and moving in and putting it in a stream can be disastrous. Not only can it be disastrous, highly illegal as well. It is. One of the reasons we're doing this five-year study is to test reproduction, and you have shocked up some fish that have actually spawned in this creek. Yep, we call them young of year or yois. They were small, they were about two inches long. All I can say is good luck, brook trout, and thank you for all your time and energy. Yep, thank you. Let's get up out of here, what do you think? Let's go.